Hello folks and welcome back to the geodynamics video lectures. In this set of lectures we're going to be looking at flexure of the lithosphere and this will basically be building upon the previous set of lectures about the basics of elasticity. So the first lecture here is a preview of what we'll be talking about in more detail in the following video lectures and that is about flexure of an elastic plate. Now we have one goal in the lecture, and that is to introduce the idea of flexure of the lithosphere using 2D elastic plates. So that will be the general model that we use for um, all of the upcoming video lectures. Now we've already seen this slide in one of the lectures from the previous set, and that is the example of flexure of the lithosphere in the Foreland Basin setting. So this is adjacent to um, two mountain ranges that were uplifted uh, back when the Rocky Mountains in the western U.S. were being constructed. Those are the Beartooth Mountains in the top section and the Wind River Mountains in the lower section or shown down here on the map as A and B for the two cross sections. So we've seen this idea that the load here of the uplifting mountain range pushes down on the lithosphere and that flexure results in a down warping of the footwall lithosphere and that's what forms the accommodation space for the deposition of sediment proximal to the mountain front. We also saw the example of flexure of the lithosphere in Hawaii and um, just to remind you this is the cross-section view through uh, the island of Oahu and over here on the right side is our cartoon version of the volcanic edifice this mass of rock that's formed as a result of volcanism and this mass is sitting on the lithosphere and as a result of the excess weight of this pile of volcanic rock the lithosphere is flexed downward um, proximal to that volcanic edifice. So you can see there's a region here where it's flexed down right next to or near the volcanic edifice. So the concept I hope uh, at this point is already familiar. This top figure here is basically the world that we're going to be working in when we talk now about flexure of an elastic plate and that is the sort of two-dimensional um, infinite width plate. So in the previous lecture as noted here we looked at things like stresses that are applied to an elastic material uh, as either uniaxial stress, or we also had looked at things in strain terms such as uniaxial strain, um, or cases of isotropic stress or pure shear. There were several different examples we looked at. Now we're going to focus on some more useful geological examples of the same ideas, talking about flexure of an elastic plate uh, as a result of an applied load or a torque. So we'll just get to what some of those terms mean in the following video lectures. For the moment though, we can turn our eyes to the top figure here. And that is showing some plate of length L here that is experiencing, in this case, a line load VA. So this vector that's pointed down here is some load, some force pushing down in the middle of this plate. The plate has a thickness h, which is shown between the two arrows here, and h is much smaller than its length. It's thin relative to how long it is, and both ends of this plate are pinned. So you can see these little circles here at either end of the plate are fixing its position. So it's free to rotate and be deflected in the middle, but it's pinned at the ends. Now this line load VA in the middle results in a deflection, and the deflection is noted with the letter W. It's also used for displacements. Um, and you can see that the displacement or deflection is going to vary as you go along the length of the plate. So at this point here, you can see the arrow showing W. But if you were to go further over, of course, the deflection would be larger. And in this case, it's showing you the deflection from the Y equals zero to the center of the beam or the middle of the beam. Now in order to do any kind of calculation with this stuff we can use some of the ideas we had in the previous lecture of some of the various um, balances of elastic stresses and things like that from the previous lecture 
and we need to calculate the complete balance of the forces and torques that are acting on this plate in order to make our um, calculation of the deflection. So that's what's going to be coming up in the following lectures is we're going to look at a series of different conditions that uh, we can consider one of these plates and how it would be then deflected. So it's a short lecture this time, just kind of a quick preview. And as usual, it's time then to take the quiz and see what you've learned. And then we'll move on to some of the details about flexure in the coming lectures.